Thank you to all our musicians. We wanted to give a little special treat tonight to everyone to hear Shelby's beautiful voice and Stephen's wonderful guitar playing. You're going to hear a little bit more of it later. And of course, Chris, we always get a beautiful prelude in the morning on Sunday mornings. up now I think. Yeah, it's good. So we want to welcome everyone this evening and those that are watching on Facebook or online and invite you to our Christmas Eve service. It's always a service that I think we look forward to throughout the year. We think of the different wonderful things that happen in many churches with the lighting of candles, the singing of Silent Night and all the beautiful things that happen in and around us and in this season when people's hearts seem to be opened and love seems to be in the air and we pray that that is true throughout the world. 
We've been, this is a four, four weeks ago, we started with our Advent wreath, and all four of the blue candles are lit for Advent. The first one representing peace, the second, I'm sorry, the first one representing hope, the second peace, the third love, <laughs> and the fourth joy. Uh, those get mixed around sometimes. Tonight we will light the Christ candle, since it is the night of his birth, and we will take a moment to do that. And you'll find in your bulletins, there's a folded hymnal, or a folded hymn there, called Come and Bring Light. We've been singing that each week after we light the candle. What we do is we sing on the first page, you'll see that there's a refrain, then you sing the second page, and now we're up to the fifth verse, and then you go back and sing the first page. It's a pretty tune when you, it's not a familiar tune, but it's a very pretty tune, and it fits perfectly for Advent. God's presence in the midst of the world. The birth of Jesus was God's way of saying to humankind, do not be afraid, for I am with you. We light the four candles at Christmas and the Christ candle. Now you are ready to light that white candle and place it in the center of the wreath. And after we light it, we take a deep breath. Separate your mind from the hectic excitement of the day and feel God's presence close to you as you breathe. You are never alone. Be mindful that you are loved unconditionally. Pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the life of God has given you and the life of love incarnate. Uplift the lonely, the rejected, those that are grieving, the feeble, the weak, the poor in spirit. Pray for peace in your life and throughout the world. Again, thank God for the gift of love given to us through the birth of his son, Jesus. Let us sing together, Come and Bring Light. The fifth verse. from the first chapter of John, the very first words of the book of John. And it reminds you of the book of Genesis, because it starts, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made. That 
that has been made. In him, in him was life, and that life was a light of all kinds. And let us rise once again for our call to worship. Dazzling light on our dark night. Angelic songs on a silent night. Wonderful news. Surprising good news. The promised Messiah is born. A new prince of peace has come. Rejoice! For on this star-bright holy night, the angels still sing. They bid us seek the holy in the midst of the ordinary. They call us to look into the eyes of a child and see God. They urge us to sing and dance all the way to Bethlehem. Rejoice, for this bright star-bright holy night, the angels still sing. Our opening hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful, number 91, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4 in the red hymnals. Let us bow our heads in prayer to the Holy Child of Bethlehem. Loving God, deep in the night, when all the world had locked the doors on love and closed the shutters on hope, you pierced the darkness with light and a baby's cry. Never again shall we be alone. No more shall we sit in fear. 
For Christ, the light of the world and of our lives, is born. God of angels and babies, open us once again to this miracle, this wonder that you became one with us. Let the angels sing for us. Let the star shine for us. Let the child smile at us, here and now. Amen. We'll sing hymn number 43, uh, 93, all four verses, Angels We Have Heard on High. I do that every year on Christmas Eve. Our, Christ, our scripture lesson this evening is found in the book of Luke. 
Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, and, and then it'll continue on verses 15 through 20. Here we hear of the birth of Jesus Christ. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men and women on whom God's favor rests. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing number 97, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We're doing three verses.
Our scripture continues in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. Here we hear about the shepherds. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they, see, had, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had just heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, send your spirit among us that we might hear your word, that we might be moved this night and every night by the birth of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a town in Spain that I read about this week. It's a Spanish city, and I'm going to butcher this word because I took French, not Spanish. But anyway, Alicianta, and I don't think that's right. But anyway, during COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic, they decided they were going to put the largest nativity set there was in the world, erect it in their city. And it was no idle boast. They decided that they were going to put... The figure of Joseph was going to stand at 60 feet high. The mother Mary and the baby Jesus were appropriate in size, and it could be seen for miles. And the Guinness Book of World Records certified the results. It accompanied, it accompanied, oh, my mouth tonight. It encompassed almost 602 square feet. The nativity at the time was the world's tallest static nativity scene ever erected. But of course, somebody had to beat them, and I don't know where that is. But they're famous for their interest of nativity scenes, and that's where a lot of people go to buy the nativity set. The thing they left out, though, in that nativity set were they have Mary, Joseph, and the baby. But they don't mention the shepherds or angels. And we have a nativity set out front. The baby Jesus is still here, and as a part of the service, he'll be put out, placed out in the nativity set. But we have an angel. We at least have one angel. But as we heard in scripture, there was a host of heavenly angels. And that was the way back then of saying, more than they could count of how many angels appeared proclaiming the birth of Jesus, the birth of the Son of God. One of my favorite movies, and I watch it every holiday, haven't got it yet, but I will in the next couple days, is the classic 1947 Frank Capra movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And I love to watch it. Those of you that haven't watched it, I'll give a little a, a brief synopsis. But in it, there's a man named George Bailey who is trying to think what he could have done different in his life. And he's really frustrated, almost to the point of ending his life. And he decides that he is going to end his life. But an angel... An angel not named Michael or anything like that, nothing so glamorous, but an angel named Clarence. An angel who's only a second-rate angel appears, and he saves George's life. Instead of him jumping off a bridge, the angel Clarence does. And the angel 
goes on to show what George's life would be without him. And he sees that his brother would have died if he wasn't there to save him. He sees that his wife would be, wouldn't be married, his kids wouldn't be born. There was a lot of things that George did in his community. And because he did them, it was a better place to live. But without him, things were missing. And eventually, George realizes that his life has meaning. Clarence convinces him through showing him all of this that there was a reason that he was there. And one of my favorite scenes of that movie is at the end when George comes home and there is his wife Mary and he shakes her and loves her, gives her a kiss, and there's his children, and he's so thankful for all of them. And I remember his little girl's name, Zazu. How many people have ever named their kid Zazu? Can you imagine what that would be like in school? But anyway, he realizes that his life had meaning and it was brought to him by an angel. Today, we heard about angels, a host of angels in our scripture. And I want to think about who those angels were talking about. As we'll read later, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not have perish, but have everlasting life. And the angels were there ministering to Jesus throughout his ministry, through the ministry throughout the Bible. And it made me think about do may angels still come today? Do we still find angels at work in our midst? I'm going to share a secret. When I was a kid, my sister and I are only a year apart, and I saw an angel at the foot of her bed. Now, if you knew Vita back then, there would have been no angel standing at the foot of her bed. <laughs> it might have been the de devil incarnate, and I've told her this many times, but it was an angel. Now, I don't know if I was dreaming or not, but I was petrified with fear. And I couldn't talk, which for me was one of the first times that ever happened in my life up to that point and probably since then. But I could not speak. But I saw that angel. So I do know that angels still come to us. But not always standing at the foot of our sister's bed, not always a host of angels that fill the sky, not always an angel who will jump into a river to show George Bailey that his life was worth living. Now angels come to us in many different forms. I believe with all my heart that there are angels among us. When I look out at this congregation, the first name that comes to my mind is Angel Becky. Angel Becky and Angel Amy met Warren when we first came to this church, and we were trying to think about how long ago it was we've been here. We don't know, actually. We're not good at keeping track of time, but it's been a long time. And Angel, those two angels were there. And Warren and I told them all the reasons why we should not be the minister of this church. But they didn't listen. And they brought us here. And we are truly blessed by them. And that's what angels do. When I look out, I see Angel Pam. I get my hug every week from her. And she sits, she's, not, she's in the wrong pew tonight, but I don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> she, we know our places. As Presbyterians, we know where we belong. And we go there. But Pam is there with Angel Shelby. And now I guess we have to add Stephen on to that too for deciding to play. And he's not done playing for us tonight. And he didn't do it because he wanted to, but because I asked him to. And I'm thankful for that. And we have the Angel Chris, who week after week spends hours practicing. 
She was here this afternoon. She was here this morning. She's here this evening. Chris is an angel giving of her gift. And I look back there and I see Angel Maury. And what could I say about Maury? But good, because she prays for everybody here. And I know she's praying for us. Hmm? Which is in your right hand, so you can say a lot. I know, but I'm, I'm going to be honest. Maury is our prayer warrior. And I look and I see Jan and Mike. The angel Michael. Now that's a name that fits. The archangel Michael. And all he does for the church. And all Jan does. And the angel Chris who drove Warren and I down to Oil City, I think it was, and um, so we could meet before the Committee on Ministry. I look out here and I, I see angels all around. Angel Heidi, who cleans the church. Angel Barb, who brings joy to us all the time. For a hundred years, has brought joy to this church. Well, almost a hundred years to the church probably 80 years to the church, if I'm exaggerating, but a long time. Angel Jeff, who takes care of everybody. Angel Jeff, who was there. And I could go on and on and name everybody, for you all are angels. And what I mean when I say you are all angels is you're all given the opportunity at some point in your life to be the hands and feet of God. At some point, God is going to put in front of you an opportunity to serve him. It may not be to preach. And trust me, when I got called to the ministry and God hit me over the head by it, that's the only way I could ever imagine myself standing up here speaking to people. But when he did, I knew I had no choice but to answer. And I was hit over the head. But it was because of the intervention of other people who said, God's calling you into the ministry. But each and every one of you, I can say the same thing. The gift of hospitality with John and Olga. Steve, who's been here for two, two years now from Australia. We, we froze to death last year and now we're gonna roast. Um, but uh, he helped get Carol in here, and uh, a blessing. All of you are a blessing. And we are truly thankful for all that God has given. And I would be remiss not to say that the angel of First Presbyterian Church in Cowdesport, for you all took a risk on us. You all made a stand in our community. And it was possible that it might not be a popular one. And I know for a fact that there were people that were not happy that we were here. Not here in this congregation, but in our community. As I sat at breakfast once and heard them talk about it. And uh, after they were done, I told them who I was. But uh, anyway... You are all angels. And that was the devil in me then, I could say that, <laughs> not the angel. But God has called all of us to be an angel for somebody. And tonight, as we celebrate the birth of his son, tonight, as we sing these songs and hear again of the good news, let us not keep it here in this church. For the love exists all because of us and all what we do. Love is here in this world. As I sh shared this morning, I saw a picture online that had the baby Jesus in Bethlehem, and it was in the church, supposedly where the manger was, and the crash was filled with debris from the bombings in Gaza and in Israel, the hate that was shown. And on top of it, barely being able to be seen was the figure of baby Jesus. 
But in the midst of that turmoil going on there, the midst of the war and the fighting and the murders, God could be found through Jesus Christ. In the midst of Ukraine, churches were filled with people celebrating and praying for the Prince of Peace. We tonight pray for the Prince of Peace in our world, in our country. May we get along in our homes, in our community, in our own lives. May we have the Prince of Peace. For Jesus Christ <laughs> is a gift from God. Let us have a wonder filled life, a life knowing that all of us have a place, and because of us, people are changed. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to share with you more of those words from the book of John, and then I'll pray. But hear these words from John 3.16. 316 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever believes has life everlasting because of the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. In our hymnals, or excuse me, in your bulletins, you're going to find the copy of O Holy Night. Actually, I'm going to, say, I'm going to pray first. I, I'm a little out of order today. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us to be filled with your peace this day and every day. Give us peace in our world. We pray for those who are victims of war in Africa, where in Ukraine, the people in Russia under a dictator. We pray for those in the Middle East. We pray for both sides, knowing that people suffer. Horror has been done, and yet people are suffering still in retribution. We pray for our country. May we have peace. May we see the good in everybody. Not how we are different, but how we are alike. We pray for those in our homes. For those that are mourning this night. For those that the holiday has a bittersweet time. We pray your healing to be among them. For those who mourn, give your peace. For those who are ill, give your healing. For those who doubt, give your word, give your, your intelligence, your light. God, we ask you to be in our lives and we thank you for the glory of the angels that proclaim the birth of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the way that you've called each and every one of us to be of service to you in our community. For we know that you are calling us to your service. For we are truly blessed to be your children. Help us to see the wonder of this world. Help us to treat it with love Help us to treat our neighbors with love. Help us to be love for all that we come in contact with. We thank you for the way that you work in our lives 
and we thank you for the gift of this babe, your son Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, but forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now join together in singing the hymn, O Holy Night. And we are singing the two verses of this. The first two, I would imagine. One and three. We'll make a decision. One and three. We'll have to.
Tonight we share the gift of candlelight, and you may be seated. We share the gift of candlelight because the light of the world through Jesus Christ has come into the world. Christ is our light. Christ is the light that gives all to us, and we are truly grateful. As we pass the light, we would ask that you hold your candle upright and put the unlit one into the lit candle. And that way you will not have wax on you or the pews, which Heidi, I think, will be very happy about. But let us pass the light of Christ. And we're going to wait till everybody has the light. And then Shelby's going to sing the first verse of Silent Night. Stephen's going to play it for us on the guitar. And then we will join together singing. Let us receive the light of Christ.
Jesus Christ is in the manger now, and the Savior of the world has been born. Who would have ever thought that Jesus would have come, the King of Israel would come as a small child, born in a manger? Would we have ever had Jesus be born that way? I don't think so. But God had other plans. Jesus was born just like we are, humble, helpless, and with a mother and a father and a God who loved him. The light of the world is Jesus Christ, and the light of each of your candles illuminates each of your faces. It's the most beautiful time of the year to see each and every person face illuminated by the glory of God and the light of God in candlelight. Take the light into the world through Jesus Christ and your strength in being his angels. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.